Hello, Steve Barcello, Cryptozoology Paranormal Museum down in Littleton, North Carolina. Uh, just a little short video reaching out. It's a rainy day. Uh, it's Saturday. We're hoping to get a decent crowd in the museum. Uh, Stephanie's coming into work today. I'm going to see if I can get some other stuff done. Let's hope we get some videos shot, but uh, whatever I do, obviously, is going to be inside. Uh, you know, as a museum, we've been looking to get some kind of uh, either camper or preferably something we can drive. Uh, but right now with the COVID, that's, the prices are crazy. Just It's hard to get anything. So we've been looking at maybe even a school bus or something like that, which will paint up and, you know, it'll be a, a driving advertisement for us to go out on the roads. We had this nice couple come by to show us their camper they just picked up. Uh, these are very impressive, but way outside our price range. And here's like a two-year to three-year turnaround time on them. That's how popular they are. And they have modules, which is pretty cool, so you can move things around like a two-by-two -two set for everything inside the kitchen and this and that. Uh, another thing, I shot a little video here the other day. Uh, just some new additions to the museum. A Ram Pen deck print we got from Cliff from Finding Bigfoot uh, at the Crypticon. I finally got that set up and some information and the date and that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to get more and more stuff like that in. Uh, otherwise, things I'm planning on doing, getting on the road, I've been having some vehicle issues. Uh, everything I've got is kind of older, and right now is not the time to buy anything new or used. So I'm kind of holding off. So if anything, no, anybody knows of anything you think would work for the museum, let us know. Uh, I'm planning on going on the road. One of the things I'm going to do is an organized thing. It has nothing to do with us. Is going to be the Collecticon in Charlotte, which is June uh, 4th and 5th, uh, just to go down and network with you know some of the guys down there and stuff. And uh, it's, that's not too far for us. Uh, it's, you know, southern uh, North Carolina, so it'll be a good place for us to promote the museum and get some stuff going. Uh, I'm finally starting to feel like a human being after this, you know, tick bite incident I went through and getting used to my routine of, you know, very limited food to eat and all that sort of thing. Uh, we're still moving along in the museum. Actually, my wife actually took a ride to Home Depot to pick up supplies for our money pit house we're working on there. And I asked her to grab some more brushes and paint for here so we can continue to paint. But uh, most of the painting I need to do is exterior, and it's, the rain's just been killing us lately. It's, like I said, it's lily rain as we speak. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going. I'm still waiting for the plumber to come, find out what the hell's going on with the bathrooms here. So we have some kind of collapsed pipe in the ground. We need to get that fixed before I can do the official grand opening and get events going. I can't have people coming in and go like, well, no bathroom, you know. And the portal on outside just ain't going to cut it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's kind of like number one to get done. I have some uh, little structural things I need to get done. I'm going to get a couple of guys in and give me some prices on that. And uh, then it's just a matter of me getting my act together and getting the back room cleared and setting that up for keynote speakers to come in. Uh, it's, it's pretty much epoxy paint on the floor, some additional lighting, and then just a bunch of seating. You know, if I have to borrow it from somewhere, I can do that for the time being. Get a bunch of fold-up chairs. And we're going to start off small, just get in some uh, book authors and some friends that were willing to come down and just talk about things. I've got a couple of guys that are like biting at the bit, would love to come, so that's great. And uh, we're going to get to the point, once we're set up here, at least once a month we have something going, if not more. Then, of course, we're going to try to get some competitions going with the MetaZoo game. It's going to be coming out, Wilderness, uh, which the game is already out, but Wilderness is more based on us. And some stuff I'll be talking to you about that as soon as stuff comes in. A uh, little secret stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is going on. We want to get, I was, I was planning this weekend to go back down to Medoc Mountain State Park and shoot some videos there. Uh, the guy, I haven't been down in weeks. The other guys have, Johnny and them. Uh, another thing we're talking about, we haven't sat down and discussed it 100%. I've been dabbling with my podcast, and uh, I've really now that i got to get this building set, and I actually have a room in the back, and I have a, a little sign up that will light up and say, on the air, or, you know, don't disturb, basically. Uh, so I'm gonna, we're talking about the guys getting the whole, our little group together. This will be at least three or four of us on at one time discussing things. I think that'd be pretty good. So we're gonna try that. Uh, I'll let you know once we confirm and I talk to everybody. But it was actually kind of their idea. I mean, they came, you know, kind of bounced it off every each other and then came back to, uh, through George and said, would you be, you know, thinking of doing something like that? I said, that'd be fun. I mean, you know, you guys are hearing way too much of me. I mean, occasionally I get Ariana Peanut out there. But right now, because of COVID, it's been me, 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 and I need to get out with the guys and do more paranormal act, uh, investigations and just traveling and interviewing people. And it's just, it's just been taking forever to get off the ground. And of course, the tick bite didn't help any either. But uh, we're getting there, little by little. 
Uh, it's a crazy world. We're coming out of it. I think you're going to see a little change in people's attitude. Just, you know, when you go up and see somebody you haven't seen, like you go up the hug with, like, no, stay away, you know. And uh, I think there's going to be some uh, different ways of traveling and things. But, you know, I was traveling through it. I made sure I was safe and I had my mask and I didn't eat more stew, which I can't eat anymore because there's beef in it, you know. But, uh, I, I definitely want to get back on the road right now. I'm just trying to get the museum going. Uh, the, once the weather gets better, we'll start getting the murals painted. I mean, it's going to move. It's going to move quick here. And we're going to get a lot of stuff done. And it's going to look good, you guys who haven't been by or haven't seen the videos of the place. It's big compared to what the other one is. And we're only using the main part for the museum. And then we have back rooms for a conference room. Obviously, my office. My daughter has an area. She can do uh, tarot cards and uh, palm reading, whatever, back there. Uh, then we have a room the same size as the museum area to the uh, west here. It's attached to the building. It's part of the building. And that's going to be a, a large area. We're going to have uh, keynote speakers. That'll be our, uh, our expedition room, I guess. Yeah, we could use it for everything. If somebody wants to bar rent it out to use it for you know, an event, they want to come in and do it. I'm not sure how many people it's hold. I would guess around 75, somewhere like that, comfortably. Uh, so this way, I don't want to have chairs permanently placed at least not too many i do do, do theater seats uh which we've been offered which we've considered and uh and i could always mount those to plywood but i'd like to have me to more freely move things so if we want to bring in vendors and set tables up around the wall and then down the middle we could do that uh so we're going to see what we can do we're going we're gonna to try different things uh, the main thing for sure is going to have people come in and speak since we haven't been able to do our uh paracon because of covid and uh one of the other things I'm going to do this week, I'm going to, uh, today, like I said, a Saturday, I'm going to head down to the park, and I'll do it probably during the week, so talk to the uh, uh, superintendent and rangers there, and get some tentative dates, and we'll do, get a Bigfoot in the park going. But here we have enough property, too. We can do some of those sort of events here. I have property put food trucks on. I still have parking, so I want to get that going, too. Uh, so we have a lot of options, a lot of options. We just got to get the damn bathrooms fixed. <laughs> You're literally stuck because you can't use the toilets. Uh, but beyond that, things have been good. Uh, I'm going to vacuum it a little bit here. I've pretty much got everything on except for the TVs. Uh, we have a bunch of loops. I'm trying to add more of the videos. As you guys know from coming to the museum or watching the videos that we have, we've had a lot of incredible activity. I've been very lucky to catch some amazing stuff. Even when I was a journalist for the Daily News, doing some little documentaries I did with them, they were just here and there when I was able to do those sort of things. I want to try to combine that because a lot of people who haven't been here, a lot of stuff we used to talk about, we just aren't anymore. We're talking about all the newer stuff that's more relevant to this area. So I want to go back and tell kind of the old story. So I'm going to do is condense that all down, put together some videos where I'll briefly talk. I know I'm not briefly talking now, but talk briefly and kind of a little intro and then say, I caught this, this is something I did, and show the ghost cat. And then move on to the next thing, you know, some paranormal stuff at the dollhouse or uh, uh, the Jersey Devil piece or whatever. Just, you know, mix little things up and kind of, not necessarily a timeline, but just put things together. And because uh, right now I go back and I, my, my daughter Heather was in here helped me yesterday. We're talking about some of the stories we did and other things. And Mothman, which I've really never done anything with, but even just telling a Mothman story to somebody and then going like, hey, what's the date on that? I said, geez, I don't know. And then the, the Jersey Devil, I think it's, she told me yesterday, I don't even remember now. I think it was in the 60s, I remember. But the Jersey Devil one goes back to the 1700s. I mean, it's like, but I need these are dates. I need, the, I used to know, and I don't know now because I'm not telling those stories. And it's a lot of dates and figures and stuff. And like, you know, people like Ken Gearhart, I give him all the credit in the world. That guy sits down and people interview him. Boy, he just knocks the figures and the dates and stuff out. So like, yeah, maybe he's a lot younger than me. But, uh, it's like, I need to get that down in this way, and I want to get it in video form, too, because that's kind of the way people, you know, they don't have to literally, li they can literally even just listen, but we've got to do a podcast. I like to do it with a video uh, portion, too. This way, uh, if you just want to listen and drive, you're great, but if you want to go back and see the images of the things we're talking about, you can easily just bring them right back up, and we'll make sure that we have, like, a, a thing either at the beginning or at the end where I have all the images or a place linked where you can go to them all the evidence we've caught like the bigfoot and medoc mountain that's a that's a great piece of evidence and that's just uh, amazing a really lucky score uh the uh confederate soldier we caught i mean that's just another amazing piece we've got some really good stuff we've been very lucky uh, and we throw anything out that we think is even slightly questionable uh, you know we're not going to show you a bunch of 
bent branches or you know oddly placed rock in the trail you know it's, we're just not going to do that uh, even prints that we show we're trying to be careful with they have to be it has to be a reason we're thinking if there we see a bunch of prints on a trail we kind of just throw them out i mean it's you know we're looking for things that look unusual size shape uh, off trail especially where you know who the hell's walking around with you know naked feet out in the area that's known for snakes ticks and all this other stuff out there you know toxic spiders and uh but anyway we go out we try to do our due diligence and you know, bring everything to you in a proper way uh yeah just a little video i'm just kind of like killing time before i literally vacuum and uh, make a lot of noise uh try to think what else is happening here oh uh, we had doll movement uh, the day the one of the dolls we got from Reby Reed, who runs the Doll House, one of the places we used to do paranormal investigations, she actually got sick. I didn't know it. She actually had to call nine one one, and her son's doll. Now Ronald died in nineteen eighty seven in a car crash. That was her only son, and lost her husband shortly after of a massive heart attack. So she's never got remarried. She's a sweetheart. Anyway, the uh, doll that we got from uh, her for his, his doll, one of his dolls, it was uh, leaning forward, kind of like this. The next day I come in, it's rotating its arms up around the corner behind another doll. It's like, what the hell, you know? And I literally was filming the place that night, just putting together pieces for a video that I didn't like anything I got there because just the lighting and stuff. And I actually end up using more of these dolls we have that the lights are in them, the eyes illuminate, just more of a creepy look. And uh, so I was looking more as advertisement stuff. And uh, so I called up my daughter, Holly, because she's got a key to the back. I said, you know, I got cameras in here, but they didn't see the dolls. They just missed that. But they, you'd see if anyone was in the place or even outside. And I said, did you come in or anything? And she's like, no, no, no. So I mentioned to my wife, I sent everyone photos of the before and after the dolls, the doll. And uh, my wife said, reach out to Reby. And I should have right away, and I did. Uh, you know, with all the crap I got going in town, I was running around, dealing with everything else. And I was in town hall, I'm a town commissioner. And I see Reby come in, so she waves to me. And I look at her, she looks exhausted, she looks tired. So I hear her talking to the clerk, and she's paying her water bill. So I go, right, well, how are you doing? She goes, I'm not feeling good and stuff. And she tells me about the whole story, how she was really under the weather. And she's in her 90s. And uh, so uh, basically she took something to feel better. Next day she felt even worse. So she was worried and called 911 and all that. And that's when the doll moved. So it was that night. So just, you know, another one of those crazy coincidences and stories here. So we're gonna put a camera on Ronald's doll. And we just, we gotta have cameras all throughout the place. We just don't have it all set up now since, yeah, we're still soft opening, still setting things up. We still don't even know exactly where everything's gonna stay. I think the cryptozoology and where Stinky is and the prints, that I'm pretty happy with, that works. The paranormal section, not so much. I, I wanna change it up. I, I like it, things that have more of a room effect where you walk in and all of a sudden you see this and then you turn here and you see that. You know, it's not, I don't want this here you because know, the building's kind of one large big rectangle you know, and it's actually got multiple sections but for the museum part it's one large where the old museum even though it was much much smaller 250 square feet in front of a house it was smaller rooms so you walked in here you saw this room then you walked through this door and you saw that room and it's a head that kind of effect and it was much higher ceilings we had in the house than we have here so we were able to have things up higher and chairs hung in a wall with dolls sitting in the chairs and had that nice kind of effect which so we have to change it up here and uh plus i want to get the lighting to be a little bit more right now the light is a little on the bright side which is what, kind of what we need for working on the place but i'd like to have some uh, a little bit more interesting lighting set up at one point but we gotta get that figured out anyway i'm going on i'm babbling uh i just want to reach out to you guys uh if you guys have any ideas or anything like i said uh we're all excited about getting back on the road uh, anything you want to talk about uh, a couple of people have reached out to me and I apologize I haven't come back uh, wrote, wrote back to you I'm going to do that today uh, one guy reached out on uh, YouTube saying that he's got activity in the house and wanted me to reach out to him and uh, I just been busy so that today's the day I'm going to play catch up since I have an employee in the museum coming in and some other stuff but anything like that you guys any ideas for videos or places we should go uh, let us know uh, we're, we're trying to set it up and I, you know, I've got a really good bunch of guys that are working with us and uh, they're good honest people they're not going to come and make things up and they're uh we're not out there to browbeat anybody or anything like that which we have groups out there to do that if it's not theirs they, they hate it and, and that's just ridiculous that's not what it's all about same thing with the, uh, the fellow museums we all work together we're all helping each other if you're going to come to my museum you're going to go to someone else's museum and that's why i reach out to the other museums and we, we support each other uh, you know Cliff's got his museum in Oregon. You know, I'm going to put up the piece here. I'm going to get it. I got to get one of the cards for his museum. I got it here somewhere from Crypticon. And I'm going to support his museum because that doesn't hurt me. 
if you're coming here and I'm, you know, we make sure we change things up constantly as it's fresh. So if you come here in six months, you come back, we're going to have some new stuff. And we're going to have new videos, new evidence, because we're out there constantly researching and looking. And that's why I'm trying to rehash some of the older stuff, because a lot of people have come in in the last year or so, don't even know any of those stories of the stuff that happened, you know, pieces I did 12 years ago, you know. Even the Bigfoot piece I did up in White Hole, New York. I mean, I, I've got to re repurpose that. Paul Bartholomew, I've got a lot, I've done a lot of stuff over the years, and I just need to, you know, repurpose it, re-put it out, shorten it, polish it up a little bit, you know, make it fresh for a new crowd. Anyway, so that's kind of what I'm working on, and that's stuff I can do while I'm stuck here, rainy days like this. And uh, so that's about it. I just want to bring you guys up to speed. Oh, and by the way, we are starting to sell some MetaZoo stuff, if you guys are into any of that stuff which we, uh, we've gotten into because they were actually having some stuff done with doing tie-ins with us, which is a big deal for the town and everything. So uh, no one else sells any of that here. We're not, you know, at this point, we're not looking to become a card store. We're just selling that product, and, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, folks. Everyone take care. Uh, everyone be good. Uh, be healthy out there. Uh, take care of one another. And I'm going to go because here comes Stephanie.